<clears throat> Once more into the breach, dear friends. Uh, we have equipment. And herein lies the goods that characters may purchase. And this is pretty pedestrian for the most part. Uh, he talks about uh, used equipment being sold back for half price of the listed cost. Typical. Um, <clears throat> equipment has integrity points. Some games do that, so again, not really too much unusual here. Uh, to me, that's kind of asking a lot to give every item in your game an extra stat. But he does it, and we wouldn't expect anything less from Fatal. Uh, he does then go on to give it not just integrity points, but three different kinds, because you can pound on an apron all day long, and it's not likely to ruin its integrity, because you would have to use stabbing or burning. So, of course, items need a uh, hacking slash pounding slash burning division so all items have three numbers for their integrity points and I think that's overkill I'm pretty sure that's overkill and then IPs are not detracted from an item in normal combat for example if a warrior is struck the armor does not lose IP the warrior loses LP, which is life points, or something. If an item is targeted itself, however, it loses IP. Okay. And then it, he just totally switches and goes to currency. <coughs> which, and then he goes on a little bit into seals and coins, and 50 coins is a pound and a bar is 10 pounds and here's what coins are one gold piece is 10 silver pieces and <clears throat> obviously gold piece is uh, it has one integrity point to hacking one to pounding and 15 to burning and electrum is uh, these are actually different uh, and he's actually come up with this no doubt from the actual atomic weight and Mo's hardness scale and it's amazing really because I I've looked this stuff up and I know where this came from but I would be insane if I actually used it in this way but he did it <coughs> yeah, he mentions Electrum and Bronze are not currently used as coins though may, may be found in ancient treasure hoards which is correct uh, currently, I presume, is the pseudo-medieval times that he set his game in. Um, most coins will be copper, silver, or gold. Copper are the typical wages of peasants in the lower class. Silver is serfs and middle class. And gold is nobles and upper class. To put currency in perspective, the average character is a peasant. Uh, most peasants struggle to earn enough to feed themselves, earning less than a silver piece for a day's labor, uh, often four copper pieces, and even that is historically exaggerated. Most peasants earned about one penny, one silver penny, uh, which is not a silver piece. <coughs> that would be closer to a shilling, uh, an, a historical shilling in England. Uh, so this is kind of a strange I'm not exactly sure what system he's using here because this is not a, a historical system and it's not really even an analog to a historical system but the way he does they very well could be his version of one and it may work out to be exactly right but <coughs> His, his stuff is so dense it would be impossible to tell. And he goes on about clothes. Uh, peasants outside of a town, peasants are slaves. Mm, no. And all belong to one serf or another. No. That's not what peasants were. That, no, that's, no. Inside town, peasants may be free or slaves. D 
Did he take a history class? If free, a yearly fee must be paid to the town to live there. Peasants live in single room huts. Okay. Structures are built to last about 20 years before they need to be torn down and rebuilt. Serfs who own land. No. Serfs didn't own land. That's why they were serfs. Oh, he did not take a history class. Although I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that was one of his degrees. Um, apparently before he wrote this and he didn't go back and fix anything. <clears throat> um, and then he goes on into nobility uh, and serfs would band together for the protection of a no serfs wouldn't band together for the protection of a lord they were serfs because a lord protected them because they uh, uh, okay anyway <clears throat> Uh, bars of royal property. Yeah, I suppose if you found bars, that would be the presence of likely stolen royal property. That's probably true. 16 ounces in a pound, 2,000 pounds, or 250 gallons in a ton. Okay. And equipment is numbered to facilitate determining the plunder in Chapter 14, Treasure. So, um, let's go check it out. We see equipment here has cost, weight in pounds, and integrity points. Which it's good to know anvils have 10,000 integrity points versus hacking, uh, pounding, and burning. <coughs> Aprons uh, can't be pounded, apparently. You just can't, you, you could pound an apron. To infinity and it would not affect it that's awesome about Balanchian what is that a straw backpack did that need to be put in there probably not and belt leather belt single D&D &D would be would be impressed at this guy the way he he puts these things in these lists like this uh, bucket metal bucket wood brooch I mean this stuff is just a book a hundred blank pages bit and bridle chastity belt gotta have that that's in all the RPGs right uh, candles uh, one two three three kinds walking canes lump of coal <clears throat> Number 33, you'll notice, is a condom. And uh, yes, he describes all of these, so this is, uh, this is explained later. And it weighs two ounces, costs one copper piece, and has two integrity points versus pounding. Mm-hmm. D... I... Uh, number... No, number 36. Number 36 has 200 integrity points versus burning. Okay. It has more integrity points than a horseshoe. What? Is it made out of diamond? Okay. Mm, all right, we'll go on. Uh, lock and key, lock picking tools. Uh, marbles, bag of marbles. 30. Polished iron mirror. Pantaloons. And you got your pipes and all this such things. <coughs> uh, sundials, religious symbols. Um, and yes, table, a five by three table for when you need to buy that and include that with your character, I, I guess. Tent for two humans, aged urine, a gallon, and it also is 200 versus burning, I think, 
may be well okay I won't argue because I will admit I don't know how resistant aged urine is against fire so I'll let him have the I'll let him win this argument he probably knows better than me on this one um, and then he starts in with okay a ballot Balanchian is a little bag for holding money hung on a cord about the neck it can hold up to 10 coins boy that's that's useful a whole 10 coins okay and backpacks and, and buckets and candles and bits and bridles and bookcases because you need that when you're an adventurer I think this is for furnishing your own house and candles and dice and oh let's see what we got over here an olis boss it is sold to single females by merchants made of stone and represents a penis in size and shape yes this is really in an equipment list feverishly apparently that's the only way to do it um, I, I don't know if that's in the instructions if those are scribed out also or um, and he makes sure to say vagina and oh, well olive oil at least is uh, I guess I guess if you used rapeseed oil that would make uh, no I, he missed an opportunity there though uh, let's check out the condom here uh, this tool may take many forms I guess that's a tool he's a tool uh, to prevent pregnancy the most popular is the bladder of a goat uh, animal intestine may be used the uh, method of cordis interruptus is popular okay well yeah but that's not a condom so why are you talking about that here um, the male withdraws <sighs> the rhythm method no no why no that goes in a different section why is that here juniper berries to the that's not a condom cedar oil so basically this line this these these two lines here the, these two lines here is what goes here the rest of this is he just wanted to include it and decided he didn't need another entry even though I'm almost certain there's another entry that this could have gone in further into his game thank you Byron okay I think that was the worst of it so we'll go on oh and let me see something for a second here and it went to 89 because naturally everything was numbered because when you roll percentage it goes to 89 okay and holy symbols and wine skins and, and then here's food anything edible may sustain a creature when eaten and I see I give him credit because here I mean blackberries how much they cost how much they weigh I don't think I necessarily need to know how many integrity points a blackberry has against hacking pounding and burning but loaf of bread broccoli butter cabbage this is you don't need this exactly in most games or really any but it's handy to be able to have as a GM so you can then streamline it and simplify it down into things that you can use to add color to a game not that you would need this for something specific or that you would need an actual ruling but that so you could add color for the players to give them a more immersive experience 
uh, he would obviously use it for the specifics I would use it for narrative purposes and I number 23 and 24 maybe it's just me being juvenile this time but rape and rape oil I, I know what those are we know from earlier that those are turnip related but and I know that is what they used to be called but I think he just liked including them uh, wasn't grain for horses called millet shouldn't it be called millet hmm all right no oh, one there's another one three rapes in one chart is that like a hat trick for this guy awesome I didn't even see it and it's right below them well congratulations Byron uh, this is butter and fish grain for horses uh, this consists of small hard seeds such as wheat and oats horses eat grain I yes yes they do Hmm. All right. Honey, meat, rape, sometimes called a turnip. A rape is an herb of the mustard family. A rape is grown for its edible root. <laughs> he said root, no. Rapes are grown for food and to feed livestock. Rape oil is a byproduct of rape seeds. It's used for lubricating and sometimes in cooking. It is the proper name, not canola oil. I, does he have some sort of a hatred for the phrase canola oil? Okay. And rapeseed, of course, is the seed of a rape. Or probably what he would call a bastard. That, I suppose, would also be a rapeseed. But he didn't say that here, but this was the perfect opportunity for that joke. And I'm disappointed in him. Very, very disappointed. Uh, feed birds, hogs, and sheep. Okay, and the rest of this is, uh, he really, he you could have done this and gone into trade goods and how much this stuff would have been worth and how much it would have taken up as cargo, and that would have been impressive also, but he didn't do that. And here's animal and slave trading. Again, I'm impressed with this part of it. This would be useful. A Bedouin horse... Brabant horse, Percheron, Dartmoor, Exmoor, and then slave adult female, slave adult male, slave boy, slave girl. Yeah. And prices for slaves vary by race and specialty. Yeah. And descriptions of some of these animals. Uh, may be found in the Grimoire Monstrum a companion book and I checked and I do have all these including the Talitaria which is the world of Fatal it apparently is a book by itself he just did not specify that in any way um, they, they're considered sold alive or as food the prices are not set here for skin or pelts Slave trading is popular, they're worth less than animals, um, nearly any age and race can be obtained. Ranging from farming, housekeeping, and sexual favors. I don't think they're really favors if they're slaves. Uh, they're not really d doing you a, a solid exactly whenever, well anyway. Uh, they may become free if the master dies of natural causes with no heirs and the local community does not claim them. Or if the master just says, oh, you're free. You've been a good sex slave for 20 years. I think you should be free. Because that's what masters are want to do. Uh, you've got to register your slave. Pay three gold pieces. Uh, slaves are so numerous. Pirates. Uh, husbands have to sell their wives and children. 
baby boys are valued far more than baby girls. Female infants are abandoned. The child is usually raised as a slave. Okay, I don't know why all that was there. There's vehicles. Pretty simplistic. Carriage cart, chariot, electica, sled, sled, wagon. What's, what's electric? A litter. For hire at the city gates. A couch with a canopy and draw. Oh, so that's what that's called. I thought that was called a. Uh, something else. I've seen another name for that, but okay, so that's what that is. And so here we go back. Get that out of the way. Um, he's got vessels, which is. Not a whole lot of games have that, unless they are specifically for uh, C C related things. So there's barges, biremes, cogs, deseres, uh, fishing boats, carves, nars, logs. And this is from different cultures. Uh, the nars are long ship. Uh, well, I think they're long ships, and there's also long ships. Quincareems, rafts, septareems, triremes, uniremes. Uh, a vessel is a vehicle crafted to permit travel on the water. A vessel. I think we know what vessels are, Mr. Chekhov. Uh, they're not built merely for travel, but for trade or war. More information is available in warfare. And he describes what each of, each of these are. A bireme has two rows of 40 oars, drives its name from, I mean, you know, this is handy. See, you can take the useful parts of this, strip it out, put it in a document for any other game and use it as a, a great resource. And next up we have siege equipment. Um, ballistas, battering ram, catapult, chi chiro, ballista, lithobolus. Manu Ballista, Onager, Trebuchet, uh, Large Crossbow, it projects a spear, Earliest Torsion Siege Machine, Stone Thrower, Onager, a pig that kicks rocks behind itself when chased, mm, Manu Ballista is a large crossbow that projects a spear. I don't know why they needed two of those, but okay. And I oh, see that, so that's handy. Um, torture devices, less handy. Not a whole lot of characters are going to need that. Chair of spikes, head crusher, pear. Uh, the pear is a device that damages orifices at long thin shaft two spoon like objects I'm not going to read any more of that uh, rack stock thumb screws um, well let's re uh, two metal plates roughly six inches wide joined by a screw passing vertically through each end in the middle of these two plates the victim must place their thumbs the two screws are tightened on the victim's thumbs okay so we now know what thumb screws are so there awake Three chains are affixed to the corner of the room. One from each wall in the ceiling is connected to a harness. The ankles are bound. The torture pulls us rope to raise the legs. The point is placed under the victim's anus. Okay, I'm done there too. Um, the cylindrical bird cage accommodates a human uh, placed in the spage. Cages spun quickly. Dizziness, nausea, and vomiting. Because when you're a torturer, what you certainly want to do is cause your victim to throw up so you have to clean it up. I'm not sure that was thought through all that well. Um, hmm. Alright. And weapons delivery penalty? Uh, subtracted from the initiative roll. Ah, he gets to use the phrase penetration. Oh, it's for penetrating armor. Well, he could dream, I guess. Reach. Oh, it's also for weapons. And it's battle axes and daggers. And and this is like the D&D &D weapons list on steroids here. 
except to his credit there is only one column for damage so uh, I actually this may actually have less stats than the D&D &D list some D&D lists I guess it depends on which ones uh, polearm, glaive, halberd, man, man catchers, forks. There's vulges and speedums and rainsewers and certainly was taken from the D and D lists. Um, bastard swords, um, broadsword, seemingly the average of swords. And I've read up on this, and there was no such thing as a broadsword by that name specifically. Uh, falchions, long swords, curved. Interestingly, I've not seen, and even here in the most historically accurate game in history, yes, even with the redundancy, there was no listing for an arming sword, which is actually what swords were called, like that the knights carried, but okay. Bull whip. Cat of Nine Tails whip. Did he have a scourge? No. Oh yeah, there it is. Whip scourge. Cat of Nine Tails with barbs. It was necessary to separate those two because well, one one d two and one d six. I guess that is quite a bit of difference. But why are you using a one d two whip? I don't know. And then more miscellaneous weapons, metal file, a grain flail, wood joined by rope, okay. A two-handed chair. A two-handed chair. Uh-huh. Two-handed hoe. Grappling hook as a weapon. Frying pan, iron. Uh, scissors, and shovel, spade, targ, which is a spiked shield, burning club, torch, and missile weapons, boomerang, does not return to thrower. So, why do you have a boomerang? Okay. Bottle, broken bottle, oil with ignited wick also known as a Molotov cocktail. Bow short, bow long. Too big to use mounted. That is not necessarily correct. There were some people historically that used mounted long bows. Cleaver, hand crossbow, wheel and ratchet crossbow. Oh, with the... Okay. Hand crossbow. Okay, yes. Uh, dagger, dart, flask, uh, uh, hammer, more horsemen's, hur hurl bat, all metal hand axe. Never heard it called that. Okay. So as you can see, good net weighted pylum. I think that's a spear, short spear, vial. So a good listing of weapons. No problems there. And then he describes all of them. And we see Peter Griffin sneaking up to cut the throat of Byron Hall using the official Fatal Games throat cutting meat cleaver, uh, which I pr probably was available for $100. I don't know why that was done like that, but anyway. I don't know if he was expecting his pure arrogance to protect him from the attack or what, but I guess it worked because he went on to make a second edition of the game, and more's the pity. But uh, I will skip ahead and uh, uh, continue to the next section since I'm pretty sure this is all just more description of weapons. And we found the next section, and it's armor numbered for your amusement and ecstasy starting with zero naked birthday suit and whatever these stats are it has none although it seems like it should have some 
arming cap. Um, it costs one and is the same as the birthday suit, but has no stats. Mm, that seems to be a waste of one silver piece. Well played. And clothing and bracers and a gambeson chain mail coif four in one and he apparently did not get the memo that there was no such thing as chain mail by that name it was called mail but not chain mail and he certainly goes into detail here with muscle mail I guess that's the molded armor that looks like a ripped uh, chest and abs thing. I don't know. Hmm. Brigandine, scale mail, plate, neck, gorget, gorget, I don't know. Pauldrons for the shoulder, articulated arms, plate, uh, ribbed helms. Bangin helm, Corinthian helm, and on and on. Heaters, kite shields, round shields, and uh, wooden body shields, suits of armor. So, although this is a little overdone, possibly useful. Although I don't see, yeah, there's scale. I don't see splint or studded leather. Yeah, there's studded leather. I guess I just wasn't looking. So he's got a pretty good selection there. So there's the armor. Um, the arming cap is pieces of linen. Not to protect someone from blows, but against chafing while wearing other armor. Okay, so this goes under the armor. The chainmail coy. Okay. I guess I can even see my way clear of that making sense. And there's banded mail, numerous metal rings, uh, hauberk, chainmail hauberk, wood buckler. Alright, so that's okay. What was this? And then there's encumbrance. Uh, consult the deadlift under the sub ability strength table. Uh, the weight of the character's load compared to the deadlift. If it's left at 25% and they are unencumbered. If it's 26 to 50%, then they're slightly, rather lightly encumbered. And he didn't have a capital L for lightly. I would think that would be a major category. Three fourths of the weight between 51 to 75%, they're moderately encumbered. And 76 to 95, they're heavily encumbered. And they move at a quarter of their pace. And if you're over 95%, you may not move effectively and reduce your encumbrance to be able to move. Pull. The amount of weight a character can pull is the sum of your deadlift and your body weight. Uh, divide the amount of the character's pull by the weight actually pulled. If you're pulling a hundred pound female carcass, again, his examples that just seem to flow out of his fingers like disgusting vomit is just speak that speaks volumes uh, characters pulling a hundred pound female carcass but can pull a maximum of 500 pounds this ratio is divided and the result is a five um, okay multiply the result from above times d4 rounds For what? Oh, before needing rest. Okay, so you can pull possibly up to 20 rounds before needing rest. This 100 pound female carcass. Mm, 
that's good to know. Um, mount you can push. Uh, is the sum of your bench and your body weight and I presume it's done the same way and here's your carrying capacity of your different items such as a Blanchion the dimensions are 2 by 2 by 3 inches weight capacity is 1 pound that's that uh, purse around your neck uh, it carries 1 pound or 10 coins and a straw backpack carries 10 pounds or 500 coins and so on that is a limited use but it could be useful there's not a whole lot of games that have this some do I think the last I think 3.5 and maybe 4 has this it actually has a capacity that may have been a fan made thing I saw though but anyway his has it Fatal has this. So if you can't find this chart anywhere else, remember Fatal has a carrying capacity chart. So there you go. And Combat is next. So come back for that.